is now time for member statements. Sorry. <laughs> the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, all of us in the legislature represent communities, and the lifeblood of those communities are volunteers. I am honoured to acknowledge the 60th anniversary of the Richmond Lions Club in the village of Richmond in the riding of Carleton. Since 1964, this volunteer-driven organization has been the heart and soul of the community. They raise funds that might go to paying for equipment at the local hospital or helping a struggling family in need. They assist seniors and make donations to programs like Meals on Wheels. They even quietly help underprivileged youth register for minor hockey or youth soccer. They organize road barriers for community events like parades and road races. They offer a team of volunteers to other groups and organizations who need help to run their events and fundraisers. In some communities, service clubs are fading away. People have other priorities than giving back to their community. But the Richmond Lions Club is a strong and growing community organization. The importance of giving back to the community is what drives their members. Love of their community and giving back is what draws special people to become members in this special organization. Congratulations to the Richmond Lions Club for making our community a community I am so proud to represent in the legislature a better place to live for 60 years. Service clubs deserve our recognition, not just in Carleton, but in every riding in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Sudbury. Speaker. Speaker, this year the Special Olympics Canada Winter Games, Le Jeu d'hiver Olympique Special Canada, ont eu lieu à Calgary. These 2024 Winter Games were extra special because seven of the national athletes were from Sudbury and they brought home seven medals. Our Sudbury athletes participated in five fin bowling and in the snowshoeing competitions, and during the games, they demonstrated tenacity, courage, and love for the sport. One of our athletes, Mathieu, is currently waiting to see if he'll be advancing to the Worlds in Italy in 2025. And it wasn't just their skills that made an impression. Air Canada was so impressed they asked for a group photo outside their plane with all the athletes in their plaid Team Ontario uniforms. It was my absolute pleasure to meet with them and their coaches at my local office last week. I love hearing about all their great experiences. And I'd like to take this time to congratulate Eric and Mathieu and Laurie, Anne, Amanda, Gabrielle and Taylor for their achievements. You've all made Sudbury incredibly proud. Felicitations pour tous vos réussites. Thank you, Speaker. Merci. The member for Thank you. So, Glenn Gary. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I want to draw attention to a remarkable grant awarded to Centre 105, an organization in my riding that serves the community's most vulnerable individuals. Centre 105 received a $106,800 capital grant from the Ontario Trillium Foundation on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. With this funding, they began construction for two new accessible washrooms in a shower facility, addressing critical needs in Cornwall. Thanks to generous donations from corporations, individuals, and community organizations, over 400 nutritious breakfasts are served each week. Beyond providing meals, Centre 105 goes above and beyond to meet the diverse needs of those they serve. The centre serves as a hub for vital services such as laundry services, support and resources, and a safe place for individuals to socialize. Having clean laundry and showers are not just about physical cleanliness, they also have profound effects on mental health. Having access to these new facilities promotes a sense of cleanliness, comfort, confidence, and making individuals foster a positive self-image, which can improve their social interactions and increase their chances at job opportunities. This project exemplifies our commitment to enhancing the well-being and quality of life for all members of our community. I extend my sincere thanks to all staff and volunteers at local agencies and organizations for all you do to help the most vulnerable individuals in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, last Friday, on April 12th, we had a, uh, in Temiskaming Cochrane, I believe many parts of Ontario as well, had a massive uh, rainstorm, but it was particularly uh, intensive in our area. Interestingly, before this rain event, we were worried about the lack of water in our area because we hardly had any snow. And, but as a result of this rain event, we had uh, the town of Kirkland Lake 
declare a state of emergency, Charlton DAC, state of emergency, Chamberlain Township, state of emergency, and Evangel Township. I'd like to um, recognize uh, the first responders who uh, did everything they could, and to the municipalities, their employees who did everything they could. Uh, in Kirkland Lake, there were some people had to be evacuated because the water came so fast that their basements flooded so fast that they didn't have time to turn off the electricity. Like, and that's an example of how our climate is changing, not just, but we're not used to these big kind of rain hurricane events where we come from. And I've reached out to the Minister of uh, Municipal Affairs and we're uh, working together to see what, what can be done for these people. But it, it's a warning of we have to be prepared. And it's also much of the infrastructure that was destroyed or damaged, quite frankly, should have been replaced years ago. And that's also a problem that our infrastructure is aging and needs to be replaced at a quicker pace. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Speaker, I rise today to congratulate the organizers and participants in the Thunder Bay 2024 annual Polar Bear Plunge. The Polar Bear Plunge in Thunder Bay started in 2010 to raise funds for the Special Olympics. It was cancelled in 2020 and 2021 due to COVID, but returned in full force in 2022. This year, 400 people participated, plunging into a hole cut in the ice on Lake Superior. Participants solicited sponsors and donors, and the 2024 total surpassed $155,000, more than double the goal of $75,000. Organizers stated that this year saw the most participants since its inception and believe that they have raised the highest overall funds in Ontario this year in the Polar Bear Plunge Challenge. The annual plunge is organized by the Roots Community Food Centre, a nonprofit organization that focuses on creating a sense of belonging and supporting people through food awareness programs such as cooking, gardening and shopping. Every initiative at Roots is designed to help people learn and share new skills. In addition to the Special Olympics, the funds will be distributed to the CNIB, the Roots Community Food Centre, and Pro Kids. Thank you to Roots Community Food Centre for your dedication and compassion to the people of Thunder Bay and for finding innovative and inspiring ways to support the less advantaged in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for University Rosedale. I want to talk today about above guideline rent increases. Every week, we talk to residents in buildings who are facing an above guideline rent increase. And when we talk to them, their reaction is fear and worry and confusion because they already pay rent that is so high and then they're getting another rent increase. And they're very worried about it. A new report just came out showing that it is actually Canada's biggest and most profitable landlords that are using and abusing the AGI system. They are frequently applying for and getting above guideline rent, rent increases approved by the Landlord and Tenant Board. And almost all of these companies can easily cover the cost of maintaining their building with the millions they collect in rent, because they are some of the most profitable companies in Canada. They are choosing to apply for an above guideline rent increase because Ontario law lets them get away with it, and it is renters who pay the price. We have also discovered a very new worrying trend, which is that once an above guideline rent increase expires and renters are eligible for a rent, a rent reduction, the landlord is failing to tell them about it and not giving them the rent reduction that they are entitled to and deserve. We raised this issue with the Attorney General, and what was his response? He dismissed it. He dismissed it. I think that is a shame. It is time to bring in strong rent control in Ontario and crack down on AGI abuse. The affordability of our province is at stake. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, please take their seats. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this week, constituents in my riding of Mississauga Centre were thrilled to hear that our government has added more than 300 new weekly trips to support two-way all-day go. This investment into the Lakeshore West and Milton Line will significantly improve the commute for constituents in my riding and demonstrates our government's commitment to building and investing in Ontario. 
And time after time, Mr. Speaker, budget after budget, our government has shown our commitment to building transit faster. Speaker, I am very proud to inform my constituents about the many ways our government is making life easier and more affordable. The One Fair policy implemented earlier this year is a prime example, which is saving commuters thousands of dollars annually. And last month's budget, we announced that we are bringing back the Mississauga Downtown Loop. The Hazel McCallion LRT will now have the Downtown Loop as part of its official plans, adding a two kilometers expansion looping around Mississauga City Centre. This is great news for my constituents as we continue providing easier and faster access to public transit right in the heart of our communities. And Mr. Speaker, after years of liberal indifference, our province was left severely behind other jurisdictions when it came to transit infrastructure. And with the strong leadership of Premier Ford, Minister Sarkaria, and Minister Thani Gasalam, our government will continue to get it done and keep Mississauga moving. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Orleans. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport, not simply as a fellow Ottawa U alumnus or because of his remarkable athletic achievements, but for his uh, securing of $200 million in the Community Sport and Recreation Infrastructure Fund, a fund that will invest in new and upgraded sport and recreation community facilities across the province. Mr. Speaker, as a parent uh, of a very active teenager, a former community football coach myself as an elected official, I can definitely say that investment in sport and recreation is paramount to the future of our society. The lack of sport and recreation facilities is one of the reasons I ran for City Council in 2010. With the support of Ottawa's greatest mayor, Jim Watson, we were able to turn an empty field into the much-heralded Francois Dupuis Recreation Facility, now one of the focal points of our community. We built 12 new parks in Orleans. We expanded Millennium Park to include a stadium that would rival our local universities. We added a cricket pitch and splash pads and came very close to adding a dome, Mr. Speaker, a dome that our community still needs. Now more than ever, Mr. Speaker, Millennium Park needs to keep pace and is ready, ready for further investment and expansion. It could include, Mr. Speaker, a track and field complex that will benefit many segments of our community, from seniors walking around the track and its grippy surface to avoid falling, to helping the future success of track and field athletes and athletes from all sports who will use the facility to train and hone their skills, such as the athletes with Gridiron Academy. Mr. Speaker, Ottawa is a hotbed of athletics. I'd invite the minister to come to Orleans and meet some of the coaches and athletes that would benefit from this investment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. Starting at sunset next Monday, the Jewish community will begin observing Passover or Pesach. Passover commemorates the escape of the Jews from 400 years of slavery, the Exodus story, the master narrative of the Jewish people. Even if you do not observe Passover, we can all embrace the broader message it carries, the universal pursuit of freedom, peace, and dignity for all people. Passover sets the moral guideposts for the Jewish people, the obligation to care for the stranger, the worship of an abstract deity, and the idea that every person is sacred, made in the image of God. In Judaism, it's not just about freedom from, it's also about freedom to, freedom to serve. Jews engaged in tikkun olam, the work of repairing the world, feel obligated to empathize with the suffering of others and to do something about it. Jews believe that every person is made in the image of God and is therefore worthy of dignity and respect. Passover also recalls the shared duty to stand for all those who are unable to stand up for themselves. The universality of Passover's three-part message of freedom, love and justice for all resonates strongly in 2024. These principles are the foundation of democratic governance in the West and our pluralistic society. Respect for each other, for the rule of law, and our democratic institutions are what allow us to live together with people of all religious backgrounds and cultural backgrounds. We cannot condone illegal activities like vandalizing homes, businesses or offices, harassing those who think differently, forcefully shutting down infrastructure as these undermine our social order. For Passover, let me confirm that I support our democratic values, our pluralistic society, and the belief in freedom, love, and justice that underpins them all. To all those celebrating, Hag Pesach Sameach.
Thank you. Member statements. The member from Markham, Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I'm delighted to share the re resounding success of the 2024 Markham Jazz Lizards Winter Fest, which just wrapped up recently. Jazz Lizards is a three month long event which was generously supported by funding from Experience Ontario program by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. I brought together gastronomers and music lovers for a night of great food and live jazz in Markham Unionville. It showcased the amazing music, musical talent and culinary skills that have right here in Markham Unionville. It's also a fantastic celebration of Canadian jazz music and our community's culinary scenes. I would like to thank Minister Lumsden and his dedicated team for spearheading the Impactful Experience Ontario program. Their efforts have not only enriched the fabric of Markham Unionville, but have also given countless local communities with opportunity to thrive. By inviting visitors to discover Ontario's diverse offerings and fostering connections with local experiences, Experience Ontario continues to stimulate tourism spending and promote cultural appreciation across our great province. And speaker, I see jazz lovers, jazz musicians too, and self-inspired dinners for Jazz Licious Winter Fest. And I think this combination makes a wonderful world. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.